We'll continue in Ezekiel chapter 29. A few things a bit different this morning. Uh, for a moment, we're going to skip over verse 5. We're going we're gonna to go back to it and end with it this morning. Um, we're going to get through this next part rather quickly. Um, a lot of these details are, are things that we've covered. You know, we covered them at the end of Jeremiah. We've covered them for the last several chapters. We've covered them um, for the last several weeks. But we've, we've covered uh, many of the things that's going to be happening uh, to Egypt are going to be the same things that happened to uh, uh, Judah that we've covered in, in detail as far as, as, as starvation, as far as being, becoming meat to beast in the field and things like that. So we're going to pick up in verse 6. And verse 6 says, And all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am the Lord, because they have been a staff agreed to the house of Israel. So Egypt is a wicked nation. Uh, we know that Egypt is a picture type of the world. We know that that uh, we are called to be separate from this world. And when God called them uh, out of Egypt in Exodus, uh, he didn't say turn back to them when you when you needed uh, military strength or, or, or some, some sort of help to come think that you're going to, to take my judgments away from you. They're, they're looking to this uh, pagan, uh, Gentile, heathen nation to come save the day. We, we covered that in detail uh, last week. Um, but here's where we see uh, one of a few reasons that we'll, we'll be covering of why God's brought his judgment. Last week we covered um, that simply he was just t he's tired of, of other nations and his people going out into, into the world and being wanting to be part of the world and turning their back on him, bringing in their false gods and them, them pushing in and, and, and uh, corrupting uh, his people. Um, and when we, when we look back at Genesis 12, 3, we, we read, it's very common, uh, scripture says, uh, I'll bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee and, and all nations will be blessed in thee. And, and so we see kind of an, un, a bit, I won't say unfair, but we see a, a, a second reason, um, why Egypt is going to be judged and why God's judgment will be falling on them is, is because even though uh, uh, Israel reached out to them, they should have turned back to God. They should have repented and, and uh, trusted God and sought his forgiveness to end his judgment, his wrath, something that he's tried and tried over and over and over again to do. But here's the simple fact that uh, Egypt answered the call. They sent their armies up and they turned their back on them. We see here in, in, in this verse, and we'll get into details in the next verse too, a few more, uh, but the simple fact is that they turned their back on Egypt. Um, so we've got, they've corrupt, been corrupting Egypt with their false gods. Uh, they, they, they came to help them. They turned their back on them. Same thing happened to, uh, to uh, England during World War II. Uh, something we've, I, I've spoke about quite often. Uh, they made a promise to um, the Jews uh, to help them get their nation back, to bring them back to get help them come back together as a nation. It, it was uh, such an unpopular event amongst the people because they're just coming out of a war. They turned their back on them, and the world superpower of that time being England, the entire economy collapsed. Uh, to the point where they couldn't pay people to even pick up trash out of the streets, you know, that would uh, stand higher than, than most humans stand. It, it was a terrible time. God's, uh, God's uh, promises in this book stand true. I don't care how old the book is. I don't care how old historical uh, people say it is, how archaic people say it is. If God says, says something, if he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And this is exactly where we see right here uh, that Egypt didn't stand a chance of coming up 
and, and, and helping them. God had ordained Nebuchadnezzar for his, uh, to bring about his judgment upon his people. He ordained them to, to take his judgment through the rest. And by the end of this chapter, we'll see what, uh, the third uh, reason why God brought his judgment on them. Um, uh, but it, it, it's also a great example for us to just take a moment and look at as we walk uh, with the Lord in, in our Christian lives, it's important to stay guarded and, and obedient to his word. Um, because when we become disobedient, when we, when we go through tough times and if we cave to those times and we just become hateful and, and, and we don't seem, uh, very Christian to the world, uh, you never know how that's going to affect them. You, you, you hear stories, I've read stories, just and heard people say nonstop, well, I don't go to church because this Christian did this. And so so even though people don't understand that we're still human beings in a corruptible flesh, and yeah, sometimes we fall, um, we, we, should, we should do our best to be guarded in, in our testimonies because th there's going to become a day when you may take witness of somebody that had you acted a little bit differently, you wouldn't be taking witness of them about to be bound and cast into hell. Uh, Egypt, uh, yet another reason, because they sought the help of, of uh, Egypt, uh, a great, a great judgment's about to come upon Egypt, wrath and famine, um, and great destruction. That's another, another reason. Verse 7 says, When they took hold of thee by thy hand, thou didst break, and rend all their shoulder, and when they leaned upon thee, thou breakest and madest all their loins to be at a stand. So we see right here, uh, when they took hold of thee, uh, we see right here, when they leaned upon thee, uh, Israel leaned upon them, they, they sought for their guidance, and Israel broke. <clears throat> they turned, uh, they tucked their tail and headed the other direction. They couldn't stand up to the might of Nebuchadnezzar's armies. Um, <clears throat> they, they had no chance. The, the only small chance they may have had, and, and I, I don't, like I said last week, I don't pretend to, to know what direction God would have took this uh, to, to uh, bring back and repent as he did in Nineveh <laughs> and spare Jerusalem, at least for a time before they come wicked again. It's inevitable in, in, in human nature and in, in countries that become faithful to the Lord. They tend to think... Uh, themselves wiser to the Lord as generations pass and as people continue to corrupt. If you look at our nation, um, a great example yesterday, I got on there this morning and, and something that I put on, uh, commented on on Facebook yesterday, and, and this is just simple uh, doctrine that you can go back and, and reading and, and studying and, and to understand that... Uh, and, for a little context, this was a, a Catholic-supported uh, page, but they weren't the only ones to come to the defense of drinking. But they, they, they became, uh, well, anyway, I got on there this morning, and, and just to look at the comments, that, that there was a couple likes on there in, in agreement, but there was, I forget, there was well over 20 people laughing in mockery at, at the simple statement that I put uh, on there about, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus didn't turn water into alcohol. He turned it into grape juice. It, it's that simple. Um, but it, it really goes to show, show us, it, at least it did me, just the context of the state of a nation, the, the nation that we live in, uh, that, that would rather uh, think themselves wiser than God and wiser than his book, rather than connecting all the dots that we'll go back to and we'll see in, in verse 5 that we've done the last uh, couple chapters in great detail on how this book from the beginning of the end continues to connect history and events that God has given us to show us from different authors in different time periods to show us that there is a great masterful author of this book and, and that no man can, can connect all these dots. Men have tried to connect dots in here, and they can't do it. They, all, all these other perverted versions, they can't do it. They continue to contradict themselves. Uh, and, and, you know, you take that first translation difference to get that copyright on it, and it, it, it's, it changed, you know, 10%, I think, is what Shane's told us. You have to change to get a copyright on it. Well, then, fast forward 30 years, how many, 
how many times has 10% changed enough of the book to get a new copyright on a new version? We have some pretty corruptible Bibles out there that have drawn men far, far from God. Uh, and the same thing, the same thing that we've been dealing with with uh, <clears throat> Judah for quite some time now, the last couple of years, uh, between um, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, um, where they didn't they didn't hold on to as a nation to Joshua's warning um, and, and to keep keep nations outside, keep them away. Don't marry their women. Don't bring them in. Keep their false gods away. Uh, he said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. What happened? It crept in, and, and here we are today. It, it just little by little, Satan chips away at something. Here in the United States, you go back 70 years, 70, 80 years, you start seeing Satan chip away at this nation. Look where we're at today, where a boy thinks he's a girl, a uh, girl thinks she's a cat, so, just be what you want to be. There's nothing sound that's stood upon, uh, and it's it's gotten to the point now where they can't even read their Bible and, and get convicted from God because there's so much changed in it um, <clears> that <throat> that the, the, all the dots that you can connect to this book to see that there's an infallible, uh, perfect God. That, that created this book for our understanding, for our for our convictions, for to know His statutes and His judgments, how to walk um, a, a Christian lifestyle. He, he's gave plenty of context there. Uh, people don't want to stand on it because they want they want the title Christian. They don't just like Judah did. They don't want the conviction or the authority of God to rule over them. Just like Judah. Judah's already destroyed, and it's affecting many nations surrounding Judah uh, at this stance. And just to, for another fact, uh, where um, I know where this melting pot, yeah, a lot of people out there would say, oh, this, I'm just a hateful bigot. But it, there's a process to come to the country legally, is all I'm saying. Our, our borders should not be open. People, <coughs> Gentiles back in the Old Testament, it, it, it they, they could have converted and came over and trusted the God of Israel. Not many of them did. Um, but there's a process that you could come, and, and in my opinion, one of those processes should, should easily be, are you a Christian? No, you're a Muslim? Go back. We'd be living in a completely different country, a country blessed by God, where a man knew that he was a man and a woman knew she was a woman, Amen. and that a, a cat or a dog was a pet. Yeah. Child. And eight, it says, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will bring a sword upon thee, and cut off man and beast uh, out of thee, and the land of Egypt shall be desolate and waste, and they shall know that I am the Lord, because he hath said, The river is mine, and I have made it. Uh, so we see again that God wasn't very happy with Pharaoh. Uh, Pharaoh, uh, we read uh, last week in the beginning here in verse um, verse 3. Uh, God reiterates another reason why he's upset with them. Uh, Pharaoh, uh, is he's not claiming this river as in it being in his territory. He's claiming that he is the creator of this. And God's not taken too kindly with the fact that somebody uh, that is his creation is, is taking credit for being the creator of something that God has made. Um, in uh, 10, it says, Behold, therefore I am against thee and against the, uh, thy rivers, and I will make the land of uh, Egypt utterly waste and desolate from the tower of Sinai, even unto the border of Ethiopia. No foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it, neither shall it be inhabited forty years. And I will make the land of Egypt desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate, and her cities among the cities that are laid waste shall be desolate forty years. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations, and will disperse them through the countries. 
So Egypt's going to be scattered. They're going to be scattered 40 years. Uh, uh, they're going to be wandering around. Uh, a lot of the things that, that are, are going to be happening to them with the desolate, the wasteland, uh, the people looking in, in, in astonishment, uh, mockery uh, by this great nation falling um, for 40 years, they're going to be wandering in the wilderness, the, the, uh, in, 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 other, in other people's countries uh, with no place to call home uh, until the Lord bring us, brings them back in. In 13 it says, Yet, yet thus saith the Lord God, at the end of 40 years will I gather the Egyptians from the people whither they were scattered, and I will bring, them, bring again the captivity of Egypt, and will cause them to return into the land of Pathros, into the land of the habitation, and they shall be there a base kingdom. It shall be the basest of the kingdoms, neither shall it exalt itself any more above the nations, and for I will diminish them, uh, that they shall no more rule over the nations. And it shall be no more the confidence of the house of Israel, which bringeth their iniquity to remembrance, uh, when they shall look after them, but they shall know that I am the Lord God. Uh, you, you would think that somebody could read this little section here, uh, go back and look at the history uh, of Egypt, and would understand that a book written before all this happened uh, uh, would, would see that uh, Egypt is a base country. They're not a superpower that they once used to be. They're not some extravagant thing to, to look at and to worry about as far as military might. They are, they exist. They're a nation. That's it. Simple. They, they, countries don't turn to them to seek their military uh, guidance and help and, and might. They, they don't rule over any other lands. They, it doesn't happen. Um, and, and just as the book said right here in these verses, they are a base country, they exist. Uh, they're no threat in the Middle Eastern countries. You, you know who the uh, Middle Eastern country uh, a threat is? It would be Iran, would probably be the biggest threat in that region today. Uh, they're definitely the most outspoken, uh, largest Middle Eastern country uh, that, it, that is uh, partnering up with, with Russia and China. Um, and, and we, we'll probably get there a little bit today, and we'll get deep into that. But um, they, they absolutely hate um, Israel, and they stand right above it. Um, all these things aren't coincidence. In 18, it says, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his armies to serve a great service against Tyrus. Every head was made bald and every shoulder was peeled, yet no, yet had no wages, nor his army for Tyrus, for the service that he had served against it. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt unto Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall take her multitude, uh, and take her spoil, and take her prey, and it shall be the wages for his army. I have given him the land of Egypt for his labor wherewith uh, he served against it because they wrought for me, saith the Lord God. In that day will I cause the horn of the house of Israel to bud forth and I will give thee the opening of the mouth in the midst of them and they shall know that I am the Lord. So we, we see here just very simple. Uh, God doesn't need uh, let, let me just say, God doesn't need need our, our, our financial help to, to support anything that he's ordained. He asked for it, um, but that's, that's between us and him. And, and um, he, he definitely does, uh, does command us to give, but he doesn't need it. And this is a great example uh, of him not needing it. Uh, we read uh, for several weeks of, over the destruction of Tyrus. I, I know we looked at, um, uh, for the most part, uh, on a large scale, of the picture type of Satan that is in that entire chapter in 28, but it ultimately was the destruction of Tyrus. And, and this is exactly how God rewarded and paid for his uh, uh, military endeavor to destroy Tyrus. Uh, he gave all the spoils of Egypt over to Nebuchadnezzar and his armies uh, to pay for that. 
Uh, before we dig into to chapter five, does anybody have a, any thoughts over over what we went through so far? All right. So verse five says, "And I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness, thee and all the fish of thy rivers. Thou shalt fall upon the open fields. Thou shalt not be brought together." nor gathered, I have given thee for meat to the beasts of the field and to the fowls of heaven. So we covered uh, the, the last part of that dealing with <clears throat> uh, Egypt. Uh, many of their people are going to fall and become uh, food to the beasts of the field. But if we look at the beginning of this and it, uh, verse uh, prior to the comma, it says, And I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness. So um, in verse 3 we see uh, the connection with this it says it compares uh, uh, Pharaoh to the great dragon um, we covered that last week in, in Revelation uh, the red dragon um, so if we go back and we look um, and start, start out in Psalm 74 14 We're gonna slow down a bit. We've got some time, so we don't, so I don't uh, get out of order here. You say then it'll just get confusing. You say seventy-four fourteen. Psalm seventy-four fourteen. Psalm seventy-four fourteen says, "Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces." And gave us him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. <clears throat> so again, here's a couple connections we see uh, from Ezekiel uh, verses three and, and, and five. Um, we we see this uh, dragon. We see that he, he's uh, going to be uh, broken, and he's going to become meat. Um, for those inhabiting the wilderness. Uh, and we know the dragon can't stay dead. And we'll get to that. Um, but uh, as we look at this uh, uh, type of dragon and his broken head, him being given for food, uh, if we look back at the Exodus 16.20, what we're going to read is... What, what, what we read is, Notwithstanding, they hearkened un, not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and sank, and Moses was wroth with them. So we see this, we see this first type of feeding in the wilderness. Uh, this isn't the first time, as we read through, through here, as we, we compare this, it's not the first time uh, that they would be fed, uh, fed in the wilderness. Uh, but but we are they are going to be fed in the wilderness again. Uh, that's going to uh, take place in Revelation. So as, as we look at this, um, we we see this co connection uh, with with being fed in the wilderness um, by by a type of man. And I, I studied in, into this, and and we we could if we if we chased everything we could chase through this and studying. Uh, we'd be just on this one verse for probably the rest of the year. It, it, it's it just, there's connections everywhere. So if, if you want to go and dig deep into these verses that we're going to go through, you can just, you can, it, it, it'll blow your mind all the connections the Lord does all uh, through all this from Genesis to Revelation, mm -hmm. things that haven't happened. Um, just, it, it just, there, there's so much that goes on in this book, that, that there's no way we can cover every subject in every direction uh, possible. Exodus 17. Exodus 16, verse 20. 16, verse 20. That, that'd be the first time they're fed in the wilderness. Um, and uh, what we see, if you go in and you study studying that, it, it'll take, it'll eventually, uh, at least if the Lord gives you the same path he gave me, um, and of course, I, I, I had some help reading through my study notes too, um, and then my my commentaries that I have. 
um, Exodus 16, or not Exodus 16, uh, Isaiah 6.13, Isaiah 6.13. Sorry, Isaiah what? 6.13. Isaiah six thirteen, um, and, and basically what we're doing is we're, we're, we're leading into a chain of events that's going to take us to uh, cannibalism. We're going to see the picture type of this dragon that, that again is in Ezekiel. Uh, that we're going that, that we're basically we're tracing his events of what's happening through the Old Testament till we end up in Revelation. Uh, but uh, in Isaiah six thirteen, <clears throat> it says, "But yet." In it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten, uh, and the teal tree, and as an oak whose substance is in them, when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. <clears throat> so, here's where we start, are starting our, our, our connection to cannibalism uh, uh, during the tribulation, uh, where Jews will be sacrificed. Um, so when we, if we turn now to Micah chapter three, verse three, Micah chapter three, verse three, it's page 1192 in my book, um, but Micah three, verse three says, we also eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin. Who also eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin uh, from off them? And they break their bones and chop them in pieces and for the pot and, and as flesh within the cauldron. So here we see direct, directly that, that God's people are going to be sacrificed. They're going to be eaten. Uh, people are going to turn to cannibalism. And hopefully here in a minute, if, if, uh, if I'm speaking clearly enough and we're looking uh, enough, um, and I hope I'm making sense like the Lord gave it to me last night, we'll, we'll see why that is um, by the end of this. <clears throat> now, Psalms 16.4. Psalm 16.4, we're going to look at this and we're going to look at some of the preparation that Satan is doing uh, do we know that Satan uh, has been preparing people for a long time now for the return of Christ, for the short seasons that he's going to have rule over over this earth when he's kicked out um, and he's, he's grounded here uh, and, and to the earth? Um, but we're going to we're going to see as he has done the same. He's been preparing. Uh, men's hearts for this um, in uh, Psalm 16 4 it says their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God their drink offerings of blood will I not offer nor take up their names into my lips so one one thing that we see uh, we know obviously it's not literal uh, but the church claims it is um, Shane covered this a bit. I don't remember if, if it was a week when the women were out here or not. But the Eucharist is something where we would do the Lord's Supper. The, the Catholic Church puts the Eucharist in place. And basically the, the priest does his little uh, prayer and, and uh, gives them the wafer, gives them the wine. And, and they believe it is literally converted to the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. They're practicing cannibalism in the Catholic Church, which is Satan's perversion of Christianity. Uh, they they are, have been for thousands of years. They continue to practice it to this day. Uh, he, is get, he is preparing people, uh, believing they're eating uh, literal flesh and drinking literal blood. It's a pagan practice. That is still in place. Now, it's it's not literal, as far as I know. I'm, I'm, there may be some crazy radical Catholic church out there somewhere in the world, uh, but at least as far as as far as uh, we can observe, they, they are not. They are eating uh, a, a wafer, a cracker, something of that sort, and, and drinking wine, uh, which 
is a whole nother subject. Um, but th they're being led to believe that, that literally, literally they're eating uh, flesh and drinking blood. And, and th this is, like I said, this is a practice because one day it's going to come to a time in the last 42 months when something like that happens. Uh, and they're going to, to quite uh, literally be <clears throat> um, cannibals. So, uh, a couple thoughts um, on this. I already covered the one with uh, the Eucharist and, and the pagan religion uh, operating uh, as a Christian religion. When it's so contrary to what uh, the book says, it's contrary to the teachings uh, of Paul, Peter, all of them. Peter, they think, is the first pope. It's not uh, not at all the case. Um, so, uh, just so people that, that may be wondering, this this dragon, this beast, has been slain. Um, <clears throat> yet he's going to rise rise again. We're gonna we're gonna end this week with Revelation chapter thirteen. Revelation chapter 13. And we're going to see what happens here. Um, in the previous chapter is, is when Satan has been uh, cast uh, down to the earth. Uh, we covered that uh, in chapter 28. Uh, this, is, this is the... Um, his fifth casting down uh, where he's bound to this earth the bottomless pit and the lake of fire are the two that come after that uh, but he's on his fifth casting down here um, in chapter 13 of Revelation says and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw the beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his head heads the crowns of blasphemy so blasphemy completely contrary to God. And the beast uh, which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power uh, and his seat and great authority. So here we have a, a description of this beast. But but when we look at, at if, if we were to dig deep into that verse, what we would see and we'll probably get back to this chapter later on in Ezekiel, but, but just to keep it simple right at this moment, that this is a description of, of Gog and, and Magog, Russia, Iran, China, all, all teaming up, the Middle East, all these surrounding nations to form this mighty, massive army, uh, and, and this beast is going to be uh, uh, worshipped by them, as we'll read in a minute. Uh, but... Uh, he, he, it, it's, it's describing a one world government and religion uh, given and authority is given here and in verse 3 it says and I saw one of the heads of, of it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wandered after the beast so here we see his, his wound healed uh, he was broken he was used to, in, in the wilderness for food uh, and now here we see it uh, put back in place here, um, and, and uh, the wound being healed uh, as a type of Satan. Uh, my title uh, in this chapter says the Satanic Trinity. Um, so, so we have Satan coming down, being cast down in the previous chapter. We see this picture type of, uh, of Satan and Antichrist, this ruler, um, uh, being healed by him. And in verse 4, it says, And they worship the dragon, uh, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. The last forty and two months is going to be a, a terrible time through this world. Uh, it's, there's going to be great uh, famine. Uh, the mark of the beast is going to be uh, put in place. And there's going to be a lot of people uh, uh, becoming cannibals. There's going to be uh, some Jews sacrificed. If we dug into this, there, we, we can read um, that, that, the, that there's those that sit around the throne. Um, 
uh, asking when when uh, they'll be coming, uh, when the Lord is going to avenge them, basically. And he says, uh, 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 in a short season. Uh, there's other people, there's other Jews that's going to be losing their life that's going to come back with the Lord uh, in, in this time. Um, we got time. Let's just kind of close this out and uh, see if we can get through verse 9. Just, just to kind of see if we can paint a clear uh, picture of this, but but a, a, as we saw right now, this be, beast that's being wounded, that's being healed, um, he, he's deceived these all, all the nations. They 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 are just sitting here in wonder, and it's made it clear that he spoke nothing but blasphemies. And, and we know that there's going to be a strong delusion that men would believe a lie, right? And in six it says, and he opened his mouth and blas blasphemy, blasphemy against God. Uh, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war against the saints and to overcome them. And power was given to uh, him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So one nation, all tongues, all power, everything's given to him. Uh, the Lord backs off and, and allows him to make war with the saints. He overcomes them. He's slaughtering them. Uh, in 8 it says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life, of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So, you, I mean, you can read back in, in uh, Revelation 3, 5, in, in uh, connection to, to this, I believe it is, uh, in, in ver verse 8 where we see that their name's not written in the book of life. Uh, in, in Revelation 3, 5, I believe it is, it, their name's being blot, blotted out uh, right there, uh, and it's not written in it anymore. So um, I, I know that there's some silly people out there that say that's a contradiction, um, and, and people will grasp at straws anywhere they can to disprove this book. And, and if, you, if you just simply have a little bit of common sense, you'll read previously in, in the book, their name was blotted out. If it's been blotted out, it's obviously not written in it. Uh, people just don't use their use their heads. Um, Can I ask a stupid question? Yep. What's blotted out? Um, if I had a pen, I'd sit here and I'd just scribble <laughs> for you. I don't have a pen up here, but basically, their name's been blotted out. Whether whether uh, it's been scribbled out, erased, oh, okay. something of that nature. Okay. It, it's been taken out of the book. Okay. It's not written in it anymore. <clears throat> Nine just simply warns, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Uh, a lot of men have ears, but they don't open them. They don't study to show themselves approved. Uh, they, they, they're, they're, it's quite evident in, in the world we live in today that people will will form their own opinions above God. They won't sit there and humble themselves. They don't study to show themselves approved because it, 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 it all comes down to people want to live the way they want to live. They want their eternity to be the way they want their eternity to be. That's what they want to live in and, and, and have it all be a nice little wrapped up bow and, and, and chase after every fleshly desire and whole title of Christian. Um, and they want no authority over them. Uh, in this book, Christianity being hated, probably probably the most hated religion in the world and fastly getting there uh, in the United States, um, just for the simple fact that it wasn't a few short years ago, 80-some percent of people at least claimed Christianity. Now it's down in the 60s, and, and, and it's fastly going down and down and down. It's because Christianity... Unlike all other religions of the world, you don't make your own destiny. Your works are, 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 are garbage. My works are garbage. Um, there's nothing we can do to be a good enough person to have a peaceful afterlife. Um, it all comes down to following uh, what the Holy Spirit has given us in this book. It all comes back to the sacrifice Jesus gave for us and his imputed righteousness. Uh, and it's it's nothing of ourselves. And it. We are called to, to not live as the world, to turn from sin, and, and it simply takes us building our own destiny completely out of it because we're we're like rags. The Bible says uh, that the heart is is uh, uh, 
wicked and, and desperate, desperately evil, who can know it? Um, God knows the heart. He searches the heart. We, we don't truly, truly know ourselves or what we're capable of, especially when, when put in, in certain situations when we're just living after this flesh. Uh, Satan can corrupt corrupt our minds and our thought processes even to a point like, like we covered a little bit, uh, I think, last Wednesday uh, where uh, Shannon had, had brought up again that, that most of these serial killers throughout history, it was never their intention to become a serial killer, but they chased after their flesh uh, to satisfy that flesh and it come back to something as what the world calls as simple as pornography, which has a high number of suicide in itself, um, but uh, it, it just it wasn't enough. So more and more and more, you don't know what you're capable of, and sin will take you to places that you never thought you could imagine growing up or as a young adult. Um, and, and it's it's just completely contrary to this book. Um, does anybody have any additional thoughts on this before we uh, stretch our legs for a minute? I, I hope all that made sense. I know. I know it, it, it may make a whole lot more sense if you get into it and you dig into it. Um, I, I probably spent um, four or five hours yesterday just reading into this subject, and I felt like I didn't even scratch the surface, um, but to get a good understanding of, of, of how a lot of these events connect. But if nobody has anything, let's stretch our legs for a few minutes.